those diseased animals like all feed abortion. Now it's a very common practice in China because we have access to the uh, to to the uh, uh, laboratories in the especially the molecular laboratories for every like uh, big companies, even some small companies, and uh, test those post uh, to test those uh, uh, samples, uh, south ma majorly cell samples, and see whether uh, uh, the uh, it, it is positive or not because. Uh, we are not using uh, any vaccines uh, for for now. So, welcome to the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine health research digested for you. My name is Dr. Clayton Johnson. I'm the host of the podcast, and joining me this week is Peng Lee. Uh, Peng is a third year PhD student at Iowa State University, working with the field epi team um, and the wonderful team that Dr. Daniel and Yaris has been putting together there. Uh, Peng, uh, some folks may know you by Jack. And so in case anybody is, uh, is wondering, oh, that looks like Jack, um, it certainly is. Thank you very much for joining us. And uh, in case there are some people out there that have not met you, why don't you start with a little introduction for the audience? Oh, thank you, Clayton. Uh, this is Jack. So some some of you might already know me. Uh, so I'm a PhD student, work in a field AB team. Uh, so previously I worked in China in the production system. As a, uh, as a research scientist, uh, mainly focused on the test removal and the early detection and surveillance of African swine fever virus. So uh, then I, uh, in 2022, I, uh, I come to the, came to the U.S. and work on projects uh, on per surveillance, mainly focused on SARS. Uh, uh, to be specific, to, is to develop a tool uh, for uh, to detect PERS in cells. Very good. A full value relationship starts with understanding your business, and Alanco knows growing the healthiest pig requires focus on every segment of production. Through continuous innovation, trusted solutions, and actionable insights, Alanco is invested in helping you achieve the full value of every decision. Their portfolio offers solutions that manage disease challenges, minimize variation, and mitigate mortality to optimize pig health. Get full value from start to finish with Elanco. Test and removal is a, a good disease eradication strategy for a lot of pathogens. It's been used for pseudo rabies here in the United States many years ago. As you mentioned, it, it was used um, well, with African swine fever in China. I think it would be good, Jack, to maybe give the audience a little refresher on uh, for African swine fever, kind of like at a very high level, what was the approach? How did we do the test? And then what was the response to a positive or a negative test? I think we had a, a video before talking about ASF, but it's good to have a refreshment because it's still the most common strategy used in China to deal with is ASF. So uh, it can be generally, the test removal strategy can be divided into two general steps. First is the test. So uh, it's kind of active surveillance by, uh, by sample and test those diseased animals like all feed abortion. Now it's a very common practice in China because we have access to the, uh, to, to the uh, uh, laboratories in the, especially the molecular laboratories for every like uh, big companies, even some small companies and uh, test those post uh, to test those uh, uh, samples, uh, south, ma majorly south samples and see whether uh, uh, the uh, it, it is positive or not, because uh, we are not using uh, any vaccines uh, for for now. So Test positive is it mean it will mean the uh, positive animals. Then uh, people will generally uh, identify uh, after testing positive. People will try to uh, sample the whole herd or a small proportion to of the herd according to the epidemiological links, and then try to identify 
every cell or at a high risk cell, uh, for example, neighboring those cells, uh, and then uh, remove them in a biosecure way so that to get the virus out of the herd. Uh, so far, uh, the, this method uh, proves very uh, successful for the highly variant strains. Excellent. And Jack, your research now has shifted to another disease, um, PERS, which gives producers trouble in many parts of the world. Do you want to talk about um, maybe different sample types, but the same type of approach you're studying for PERS? Yeah. So the general uh, idea of my PhD is to whether I can use or I can uh, prove that uh the test removal can be applied in PERS. But in PERS, it's a different scenario because we are exposing for a general herd exposure method, uh, we are exposing the whole herd. So all of them are already positive. Uh, but PERS is also different because um, at least it has two uh, characteristics. First is um, uh, lung persistently infected uh, in sows and uh, other animals. And second is that our now the uh, U.S. monitoring strategy is majorly focused uh, in the piglet samples. So what I'm trying to bring up here is that whether uh, the whether the sows uh, after herd closure can be detected, uh, for example, whether they will become lung carriers. And second, if they become lung carriers, whether they will still share the virus to the piglet. And maybe that's one of the, that can help explain the lung exposure and uh, like the ghost virus, Dr. Yeski has mentioned in the ASV, right? We have to know where the virus is coming from. So I think there's a missing gap here of not sampling cells uh, with, our, uh, with an easy way. Well, you mentioned the sows and the piglets. I think we generally assume that the sows are always the ones to give it to the piglets, but maybe it is the other way around, right? Maybe uh, maybe the sow comes in and pharaohs a negative group of pigs, but then eventually while in the lactation phase, she gets exposed and becomes positive at that time. Well, that's a good topic. Actually, um, in one of ours, uh, my study, uh, I was studying whether uh, like... Uh, after three months after exposure, uh, whether the sows and the neonatal piglets uh, have some correlations in detection. Uh, for example, the study is like, uh, I will collect the piglets 12 hours within February. So that will exclude effect of like the vice versa from piglet to sow transmission or piglet to piglet transmission. And actually, we found using this tool, using TOSC for sows, we found more positives in uh, in sows than in piglets uh, or in than in leaders. Uh, the data is uh, approximate like uh, uh, thirty percent in uh, uh, ten percent in sow population, but only ten or uh, only one or two uh, percent in the piglet population. Very good. You want to talk to us, Jack, about what type of sample you are collecting? Do we have to get blood or something complicated like that? Or are there more practical on-farm opportunities for sample collection? Well, that's a good point. Uh, for for example, uh, my study is majorly focused in the cells. For cells uh, to detect lung carriers, the reference method is tonsil scraping, right? So that targets tonsil where the uh, where uh, uh, the virus genome uh, is there for a long time. If I want to target uh, those tonsils, I try to modify the tool and uh, to, uh, to develop a tool that is more targeting on the tonsil. So that's where my tool, tonsil oral scrubbing, coming from. So generally, I'm, I'm trying to target the tonsil in the cells without bleeding. Uh, and it... it as we all know, that bleed uh, the in the blood, the viremia also lasts not too much, not long enough. And how? Um, uh, what what sort of tool or what sort of technique have you found most successful for that toss sample, the tonsil scraping sample? Well, in a study, uh, in a paper that I have published uh, in Preventive Medicine uh, as a short communication, so that's the basis of my study. 
So in that study, I compared 30 cells, uh, uh, the, uh, the purse detection in, uh, first detection in 30 cells in terms of, in three sample types, the tonsil scraping, uh, the tosk that I developed, and serum. Actually, uh, the tosk has 100 pr uh, positivity, and tonsil scraping only have 76% uh, sensitivity, uh, while the serum is around 20% uh, uh, around uh, positivity. And uh, that's of course, that has some limitations because it's owning on uh, 30 days after infection. We all know that at different times after infect, person infection, different sample types will have different possibilities. Yeah, very good. Salmonella presents significant challenges to pig health and performance and poses food safety risks to humans. As the first and only vaccine offering live attenuated strains of both Salmonella cholera suis and Typhimurium, Enterosol Salmonella TC from Boringer Ingelheim protects pigs against both serotypes with a single oral dose. Talk to your Boringer Ingelheim representative to learn more. Um, I think it's really important that we help to find the, um, uh, the best sample type to identify those animals that are positive at all times after infection. Um, you know, and, and uh, there's, there are no ghosts, right? There are no vampires and werewolves. So it's good science can always help us to solve these things. And Jack, I really appreciate your efforts towards bringing that good science to us for a disease PERS in which uh, producers here in the U.S. have an immediate application for this, this research. Thank you, Clayton. Thank you for the opportunity. Yep. Well, thank you very much for coming on the podcast and to our audience. Thank you for being a part of the show. Um, if you haven't checked out our website at swinehealthblackbelt.com, please go check it out. And if you have not subscribed to the podcast, please do so. Um, we really appreciate uh, you sharing this with any friends you think may be interested in it. Uh, for Pong Lee, I am Dr. Clayton Johnson, and we wish you a great rest of your day. Thanks for joining us on the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast. Hey everybody, we're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine health related research trial and would like to come on the show and talk about it, share it with us, please feel free to email the research to hello at wisenetics.com. That's H-E-L-L-O at W-I-S-E-N-E-T-I-X dot com.